today I am going to share something about uh, Christian response to situations um, as taught by Jesus. For that we will turn to Matthew chapter um, 19 verses 11 and 12. Now this is what Jesus says. I am reading from an RSV version. But he said to them, not everyone can accept this teaching but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let anyone accept this who can. The very ending that Jesus makes by saying, let anyone accept this who can, itself shows the radicalness of Jesus' teaching. If you look at the literary context of this, these two verses and this particular saying of Jesus, the context, the chapter 19 verses 1 to 10 is all about the case of divorce that Jesus is dealing with. Um, in the history of the church, this passage has been regularly understood in the context of divorce teaching. But then I think, perhaps, uh, at this point, Jesus is going beyond simple divorce issue. It was an important issue for Jesus. Divorce was an important, divorce was an important um, issue for Jesus to discuss and teach. But that Jesus has already done in chapter 5, verses 31 and 32 in his Sermon on the Mount. He says, it was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give a certificate of divorce. But to say to, but I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. I am not going to speak about divorce today. But I believe when the Pharisees come to Jesus while he was in Judea as chapter 19 verse 1 and 2 pointed out, when they come and ask Jesus about the issue of divorce and is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause, uh, Jesus understands the importance of the question. Uh, within its social context because divorce in the Jewish society had social ramifications. However, in this context, the second time when the divorce issue comes up in Matthew's Gospel, I think Jesus is trying to broaden the scope of the discussion to include some other important points also where um, Christian response could be defined in situations where our rights are denied, our privileges are denied. And very beautifully, Jesus picks up a rejected group of the Jewish society who did not have any share, even in the covenantal relationship with God, who were the marginalized one left out. Now Jesus takes them as a metaphor and then tries to explain how should one respond to such situation if for divorce, divorce, but much more broadly to the problem where someone's dignity itself is challenged. Now why this divorce becomes important? In the Jewish society, divorce, uh, marriage was not just uh, between two individuals as in the modern world we think. But in a very uh, Eastern culture, marriage in the Jewish society was the union of two families. and. As it was a patriarchal family, the honor of the head of the household was at stake in situations when um, the woman is left by her husband for some reason. Now, divorce is not just breach or, or violation of the agreement that the two individuals or the two families have come into, but it is also a situation according in the Jewish uh, society where individuals, two individuals
individuals deciding to separate, separate or a man deciding to leave his wife is actually challenging the honor of the girl's father, his social standing. Because the Jewish society was the society of honor and shame culture. Anything wrong done is actually bringing disgrace and dishonor to one in the social setup itself. And that's how our Indian society and the Asian culture is all about. Now here, Jesus is taking that anarch, that particular question from the mouth of Pharisees and then he is taking it and enlarging it to define the response of the people. You know why? Because the Jewish, the Christian community who was living now near Antioch, Syrian Antioch, uh, who had become Christians from Jewish background were now in conversation with or debate with the unbelieving Jews with whom they were in discussion about their past life in Judaism and the significance of now continuing by believing in Jesus. There were accusations coming against them. They must have been challenged to provocatively to respond to such situations. But Jesus is teaching them for the sake of the kingdom, you have a particular way of responding. This is an alternate way. This is not the only way that Jesus is teaching, but this is one of the good options for the Matthew readers as Matthew presents, that Jesus is teaching that they could respond to the situation that they are in, when they are challenged by their uh, kinsmen, their family members who are not believing in Jesus now. Now, who are eunuchs? Eunuchs were the people who had no standing in the um, Jewish social system. They were not part of the covenant, they had no privileges and they were outcast. In a sense, they had nothing to do with it. Uh, they were looked down upon. But Jesus is taking them as an example because they lived in dishonor. They lived in dishonor in the Jewish society and if uh, child is born in a family who is a eunuch, then it brings a dishonor to the entire family. Now it is a corporate sharing of that dishonor that Jesus is talking about. In this context, Jesus is speaking, mentioning three types of uh, eunuchs. In verse 12 he says, for there are eunuchs who have been so from birth. That means by birth there were some eunuchs, uh, some who were born as eunuchs and uh, their physical condition brought dishonor to the family um, and you know uh, among the Jews if a child was born as a um, eunuch then the virginity or the chastity of the woman or the mother uh, was questioned by people it was considered by some as the consequence of mother's inchastity um, that caused a child to be born as eunuch. So Jesus is referring to that as a first category. The second category is eunuchs made by men. They were not born as eunuchs, but they were uh, made by others for some reason in the past impotent. They are now unable to procreate. Okay, So probably some of them has undergone castration process. So they cannot. But then their status also was very low in the Jewish society. They were either slaves or publicly humiliated uh, with castration. So th that is another reason. They are eunuchs made by men. But Jesus' interest is upon the third group that he speaks about the kind of people who are potent to do procreate, but they by self-imposition have become eunuchs. They are not important to create, procreate. They can procreate. They are capable to um, give you know, life to um, uh, give new life by their relationship with a woman. But now the condition is that they make themselves to undergo a situation where they share in the dishonor and humility voluntarily of a, um, a eunuch, either made by men or a eunuch who is born as such by birth. Bruce Marina says, this type of eunuchs were the ones who are inflicted by shame due to their wife's sexual offense against them 
but still they decide to live in with her um, in a reconciled life, in a reconciled manner. Now this is the group of Jesus' interest. Jesus is speaking two things about this particular group, uh, two important things. One thing is, first, it is they are doing it voluntarily in their lives. There is no compulsion upon them. Neither they are limited by their life situation, but they choose to live as eunuchs. You know, what is that? When in a Jewish society, honor and shame culture, when if a woman committed adultery or engaged in extramarital affair, uh, she brings humiliation to her husband and also to the family. Now in that situation, Jesus is saying the response is to reconcile and some men who are still willing to take that uh, infidelity of woman by a forgiving heart and still continue to love her and choose to live with her um, by forgiving her and expecting her to live in the right manner in the days to come. That is living out uh, eunuch's lifestyle. Now it is a voluntary thing. As per the law, they could put the woman out and accuse her of adultery and she could be stoned to death. But this type of men do not do that. For example, in Joseph and Mary's case, Mary could have been accused of uh, you know, unchastity as a betrothed woman when she was found pregnant. But I believe in some sort, Joseph's response in accepting Mary when she was carrying Jesus by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. Um, Joseph, right in the beginning of Jesus' story itself, depicting this kingdom value in him that she has not done, he knows because by in vision he has done, he has received a clear, um, clear word from the angel that accept her because she is carrying the child by the power of the Holy Spirit. But Joseph, forgoes his right to bring accusations against her and to leave her quietly. Although he contemplated to put her away quietly, but now he comes forward to accept her. In a sense, in some sense, he was living out this eunuch experience in his life, in the social setting, where his respect and his dignity could be challenged. This is a self-sacrificial life. Joseph's self-sacrificial acceptance of Mary by believing in the word of the angel was actually living a eunuch's lifestyle for the coming of the Messiah. Um, and such people had to pay a high cost in their life, bear humiliation, bear shame, probably be rejected by the society. And in a Jewish society, if man's honor is lost, he loses everything. That was the biggest thing in an Eastern culture that a man tries to defend. Now this self-imposed uh, limitation is not the weakness of the character. It is actually showing the strength of the character. When negative, provocative opportunities come in our life, at times to undergo that eunuch experience in ourselves and to say that I shall not respond in the same words, in the same measure to this situation is undergoing that eunuch experience because you are potential. Legally speaking, you have the right to drag the person to uh, you know, legal course of action or to get uh, him punished and all that. But when a Christian chooses to forego his right for the sake of the kingdom of God, it is actually living out that eunuch experience. So Jesus is talking about such people that this is also one way of uh, responding to the challenges in life, not just in divorce case, but in general. The second is, why do they do that? They do it for the sake of the kingdom of God. They do it simply for the sake of the kingdom of God. This we must understand. There is no other reason, but it is God and his rule and the peace of God that he gives and that he establishes. That is the key point based on which the, these kind of self-imposed eunuchs decide to the respond to the situation. Now there is another example I can show you. Some sort of this eunuch experience that one experiences in a conflicting situation. Do you remember King Saul and David's experience? There came a time when King Saul was sleeping 
and David had every opportunity to take his soul and uh, separate uh, souls head from his body but David chooses not to do that it is not just that he is the anointed one of God but it is also that David chooses not to treat Saul in the same measure with hatred as Saul was um, having towards himself, uh, towards David. So David is actually in a sense foregoing his opportunity to take revenge against Saul by cutting his head. He, let, he allows the opportunity to be lost and wait for the Lord to work out for him at the right time in the right way how he should um, inherit that kingdom uh, that God has promised to uh, through prophet Samuel to him. Jesus undergoes that kind of an experience. Jesus lives out that self-imposed um, eunuch lifestyle in himself. And during the time of arrest, he could call the angels down and he could uh, bring the angels and destroy the soldiers who have come to arrest him. Jesus could very well just by praying to the Father could bring the angels and dis destroy his enemies and go free from there. But Jesus chooses for the sake of the kingdom, for your and my salvation. He chooses to undergo this self-imposed eunuch experience, leaving behind for us a great model to replicate in our lives. I am not saying that this is the only way that a Christian must respond in every situation, but this is also a viable option. Many a times when we are so liberation oriented, in situations when we are so activist oriented in our thinking, we only think of retaliatory measures to uh, make sure that our honor is maintained and we get our rights. But Jesus is saying, and in some situations, when your dear and near ones cheat you, they show uh, and they dishonor you, better in some situations to rest back upon the Lord and wait for His time. For some time, let's be eunuchs for His kingdom so that God at the right time will be able to act on behalf of us. Jesus underwent that eunuch experience and God the Father was faithful to him. Once his mission was accomplished on the cross, Father glorified him by resurrecting him. David underwent eunuch experience by self-imposition, but God was faithful to his promises. He made him the king without David putting Saul's blood on his hands. That is what is left behind for us. That is what God did with Joseph and Mary. They allowed themselves to undergo a time of humiliation. Despite they did no wrong, but God honored. So, Mary and Joseph had the privilege to be called the earthly parents of the great Messiah who has come to save the world. I pray that sometimes may the Lord give us grace that we live as the eunuchs for the kingdom of God. Let's be praying the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, O pardon Lord, and where there is true faith in him. O Master, O that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, and to love as to love with all my soul. May the Lord be with us and grant us the mercy that we may become sometimes for the sake of the kingdom. We may be eunuchs. That is our voluntary trust in God. May the Lord bless us through his words.